We now embark on our study of the fine structure of SU2 representations, moving towards the classification theorem that we stated a few lectures ago. So the first key observation which we're going to use is that SU2 contains a subgroup isomorphic to U1. So I'm going to call this subgroup T inside SU2. It's the set of matrices the form e to the i theta 0 0 e to the minus i theta In other words, it's the subgroup of diagonal matrices inside SU2. So if I have a representation R of SU2 on some vector space V, then I can restrict it to the diagonal matrices and I get a representation R restricted to T uh, going from T to GLV. And T is just isomorphic to U1 and we know all the U1 representations, they're just direct sums of irreducible ones and the irreducible ones are all one dimensional. Um, so this tells us that V splits as a direct sum V1, direct sum, dot, 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 direct sum Vn, let's say where N is the dimension of V, where r e to the i theta 0 0 e to the minus i theta is just diagonal with respect to this splitting so it's e to the i m 1 theta down to e to the i m n theta and zeros in the off diagonal. In other words if we pick a basis for v with a basis vector in v1, in v2, v3 up to vn then we get this diagonal matrix. And these mi's, m1 up to mn, are called the weights, and these are integers. Now, it's important to note that this is not a decomposition of V as a representation of SU2. It's a decomposition of V as a representation of this circle subgroup inside SU2. So we're not saying that V splits into one direction, one dimensional representations of SU2. We're just saying if you restrict attention to these sort of diagonal matrices, then we, we have this, this decomposition. In particular, if you act with a non-diagonal matrix in SU2, it's gonna mix up these different summands. And that will be a crucial part of our analysis later on. But for now, I want to just look at some examples and figure out what the weight space, de weight space decompositions are for those examples. Um, oh, I should say these are called weight spaces. So the VIs are called weight spaces. And these are, this is called the weight space decomposition. So yeah, I'll just work out some examples um, and then we'll use it next time to classify the representations. So um, let's start with the simplest example. Um, let's take the standard representation. In other words, we consider SU2 just as a subgroup of GL2C. And um, so in particular, if we restrict this, in, this is just the inclusion map, if we restrict this to the diagonal matrices, then R of e to the i theta 0, 0, e to the minus i theta is just the same matrix, e to the i theta 0, 0, e to the minus i theta. So this is already diagonal. Uh, the weight spaces are just um, the lines spanned by 1, 0, and 0, 1, and the weights are 1 and minus 1.
So we're going to depict this in the following way. Here's a line. It's like the number line. Here's zero. I'm going to put a blob at every integer point. And I'm going to color that blob in uh, if it appears in the weight space decomposition. So here we have one, I'm coloring it in red, and minus one. And each of them occur just once, so I'm just going to put one blob there. So that's a way of depicting this weight space decomposition. We have a summand spanned by the vector one zero with weight one, and a summand spanned by the vector zero one with weight minus one. Let's do the example um, of the representation uh, SU2 goes to GL uh, little SU2 tensor C, this three-dimensional representation that we studied in some detail. Um, so at, at some point we calculated the map R star on the Lie algebra, uh, which sent little SU2 to little GL C. Um, and let's see if we can remember what this map did. It sent i x y plus i z minus y plus i z minus i x to uh, three by three matrix, which was zero minus two z two y two z zero minus two x minus two y two x zero. This was the map on the level of Lie algebra as we calculated this. Okay, so I'm interested in this diagonal subgroup, so I can ignore y and z. I can set y and z equal to zero. And I'm just looking at exp of i x zero zero minus i x. That is e to the i x zero zero e to the minus i x. On this side, well, I can just exponentiate this matrix and I get exp of 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 2, 0, 2, 0, uh, sorry, 2x in each case. And if I exponentiate that, what I'm going to get is just 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Oh, no, uh, that's a cos, sorry, getting carried away. Cos 2x minus sine 2x zero sine two x cos two x and the weights are going to be plus or minus two. So how do I know that? Well I calculated the weights of this representation cos theta minus sine theta sine theta cos theta. Right, this was a one dimensional sorry two dimensional representation of u1 and with respect to a certain basis um, this diagonalized and became e to the i theta e to the minus i theta and that's again a sort of weight space decomposition of this representation but now I've got a 2 everywhere so if I stick 2's in front of all the thetas we'll get e to the i 2 theta Okay, so in terms of weight spaces, we have um, a weight space with weight zero, right? This one here, this diagonal entry, we think of as e to the i zero, that's uh, zero. And then here, when we diagonalize, we'll get an e to the i two x and an e to the minus i two x. So the weights in this decomposition are um, minus two, zero and two. So again, if I draw my diagram, I'm gonna get three points, minus two, zero and two. I'm missing out the points minus one and one. So this is the weight space decomposition of this representation. Let's just do one more. Um, let's take sim 2 of the standard representation. Uh, 
Um, so if E1 and E2 are a basis for the standard representation, then SIM2 has a basis basically given by polynomials E1 squared, E1, E2, and E2 squared. And how do our matrices act? Well, e to the i theta, e to the minus i theta on the diagonal. What does it do to e1? Well, e1 is the basis vector 1, 0. So it sends it to e to the i theta times 1, 0. And what does it do to e2? Well, e2 is 0, 1. So that goes to e to the minus i theta, 0, 1. So what does it do to e1 squared? e1 squared is going to go to e to the i theta times e to the i theta times e1 squared. Because each factor of e to the i theta goes to, sorry, each factor of e1 goes to e to the i theta, e1. Similarly, e1, e2 is going to go to e to the i theta, e1 e to the minus i theta e2 and that is the same as e1 e2 because the thetas cancel and e2 squared goes to e to the minus i theta e to the minus i theta e2 squared so that is uh, in the, the uh, weight space decomposition is as follows um, The weight spaces are v1 is just spanned by e1 squared, v2 is spanned by e1 e2, and v3 is spanned by uh, e2 squared, and the weights are 2, 0, and minus 2. So we get the same diagram as we did in the previous example. We get a weight space with weight minus 2, a weight space with weight 0, and a weight space with weight 2. Now we'll see later this is enough to tell us these two representations are actually isomorphic. So that's the utility of these diagrams. You can just look at the diagram and say, okay, the representations are the same because they have the same diagram. Okay, so an exercise for you is to figure out the weight diagram, in other words, this pitch with the dots for sim n of the standard representation.